It is the evening of March 14, 2020. News broadcasters are announcing that COVID-19 is officially recognized as a pandemic and only authorized persons are allowed outside of their residences. Everyone is filled with uncertainty and fear. Will my family be safe? What will happen to essential services like banks, markets, and hospitals? Will we have enough to sustain ourselves? What happens to my work? Only a day ago, Edsa was crammed with vehicles on their way home. Today, we see the unusual sight of a ghost town in our freeways. I'm here to share with you the story of DevCon's DCTX, which stands for DevCon's Technology Experts, and how we assembled a team of geeks to respond to the pandemic. My name is Darren, and I am a volunteer at DevCon, which is the Philippines' largest community of developers. I am currently working as a tech consultant, software architect, and full-stack developer. I stumbled upon DevCon's call for volunteers at the start of the pandemic when I was a full-stack software developer at the time. How will our doctors, nurses, and frontliners be able to do their work? How will they get to their work in, their per in the first place? How will families get food, and how can I help? These were only some of the questions we faced at the time. And looking back now, I have new questions. How did we build pandemic response technologies from ideation to design to development, deployment, and up to operations in just 20 days? How did the different sectors, private, public sector, and citizens work together? So DevCon, Community of Technology Experts, was built in March 16, where over a thousand volunteers answered the call and self-organized into 46 teams and four projects. These projects were open sourced and donated to the government and licensing agreements were defined for the software and to protect the contributors. In general, Relief Agad is the digital platform for disbursing financial aid to millions of Filipinos. Rapid Pass enabled our frontliners and authorized personnel to enter and exit the city. Flag Express is the donation, reporting, and transparency system of the Philippines Office of Civil Defense. And Trace COVID visualized the outbreaks so you can navigate safely. With the help of one of our key sponsors, Microsoft Azure, we built and ran these systems on Azure and delivered critical aid to our countrymen. Talking about our partners, we worked with the government and also the private sector. We worked with DOST and DICT. We also had major contributing sponsors, Microsoft, PLDT, Amihan, Talino. The BDO Foundation contributed um, mobile phones. QE360 helped with the quality assurance of our systems. PJS Law supported in the legal domain. And Sikuna helped with security analysis and vulnerability audits. And of course, all of this wouldn't be possible without the support from our private citizens um, helping out uh, in this uh, project, coming from different tech community groups. So what is Rapid Pass? Let's watch a short 90-second news video to understand it. Ng mga frontliner ang kanilang rapid pass sa www.rapidpass.ph Sagutin ng tama ang mga hinihingi personal na impormasyon Kapag natapos ng i-fill out ang lahat ng hinihingi impormasyon mayroon itong ibibigay na QR code na maaaring i-download sa cellphone o ipaprint sa papel at idikit sa sasakyan upang maskan sa mga dadaan ng checkpoint Magagamit ito ng mga frontliner at iba pang authorized personnel para mapabilis ang kanilang pagdaan sa mga checkpoint at maiwasan rin ang physical contact Ito pong rapid pass system ay kinonceptualize po natin sa IATF para mapabilis ang sistema ng pag-check ng ating mga sasakyan at mabawasan ang person-to-person -person contact sa mga frontliners na gumagawa ng critical na serbisyo sa ating mga checkpoint officers. Nilinaw naman ng IATF na makakadaan pa rin sa mga checkpoint ang mga frontliner kahit walang rapid pass, basta't ipakita lang ang kanilang ID. Katuwang ng Department of Science and Technology sa paggawa ng rapid pass ang Developers Connect Incorporated o DevCon na isang non-government organization na binubuo ng mga Filipino developers at IT professionals. Joan Arno, UNTV News and Rescue. Just... So, thank you. Um, 
I want to focus on the developer experience in participating as a volunteer in an open source project and how we leverage cloud services to rapidly build out our solutions. So I'm going to keep the introduction to Rapid Pass short so that we can get to the meaty part of the presentation. In general, in Rapid Pass, you go to our website, the registration website, you register for a Rapid Pass. Um, someone on the approver dashboard approves your request. You receive an SMS or an email notification uh, receiving this PDF that you can print out and attach to your vehicle. And then you just simply pass through and get uh, access in and out of the city. In summary, Rapid Pass has three primary systems. It's the registration website, the approver dashboard, and the inspector app, which is used to scan the QR codes. So once you apply, uh, the request for a Rapid Pass goes through the approver dashboard, which has the analytics and also the uh, approval uh, workflow uh, to grant you that uh, Rapid Pass. When you do get your Rapid Pass, you get an SMS or an email message. Um, informing you that you have been granted a rapid pass, which sends you this uh, PDF file, which I personally implemented and rendered. Um, and that PDF, you print it out and you put it on your vehicle and you simply go about your way and the inspectors basically scan the QR code, thus verifying that you are indeed an authorized person outside of residences. So this is what the checkpoint app or the inspector app looks like. It's an Android application that has scanning capability to scan the QR code and verify that the person who is authorized to go outside um, is allowed or not allowed to, to be outside of their residences. Um, if you scan the QR codes now, you will see that it's not plain text. So we worked with our software architects to define an encryption algorithm to ensure that the QR codes cannot be simply generated for any vehicle. This enabled our systems to have offline QR code scanning, reducing the need for our inspector apps to be online to verify rapid passes. So now I want to share my developer experience working with open source and cloud technologies in a volunteer context. We're going to look at three things, the constraints, the challenges, and the key takeaways. For the key takeaways, I'll share some snippets from a book that I highly recommend for mid to senior level software engineers and lifelong learners in general. It's called Apprenticeship Patterns, Guidance for Aspiring Software Craftsmen. So the first constraint is that um, the organizational structure on March 14, March 15, with the initial call for volunteers was very fluid. These are volunteers. Right? So people come in, people lurk, people watch, people see what's how the group is going. And there's no clearly defined you know, HR team and uh, team leaders. Things were very fluid. Right? So the challenge that we found is like, how are we going to organize the volunteers into productive um, pods or productive teams? So what we found was that um, the volunteers, so, so the key takeaway or the observation was that the volunteers um, organically self-organized themselves into their groups. So they found, uh, based on their own preferences and directions, they found that, hey, I wanted to contribute to the approver dashboard. These are my skill sets. This is what I can do. I can offer this as my services. I can be generous with my time. And the thing that enabled us to work very well together was that people um, were clear on the direction of what needed to be accomplished, and they were generous and humble in working with each other. So. The apprenticeship pattern that I want to share with you here is called Unleash Your Enthusiasm. And in the book, it says, if you find yourself holding back or being conscious of how much enthusiasm you have for the work uh, as compared to your colleagues, you might feel like you'll be holding back. Um, so this wasn't technically a problem during the pandemic because as uh, technology experts and geeks and lawyers and um, project managers, we didn't know how we could actually support our frontliners. And being offered this opportunity to help them clearly put away all the consciousness and the embarrassment of not knowing things. We just want to help. So we didn't experience it that much during the time. But if you do experience it at work right now, do not allow anyone to dampen your excitement for the craft. It is a precious commodity and will accelerate your learning. That's what the book says. Highly recommend you check out the book. The second constraint that we faced was that 
the volunteer work in DevCon and Rapid Pass and the other projects was on top of the person's other responsibilities. They still have to go to their daily work, right? So the challenge here is how do we assign clear ownership and responsibilities to the volunteers and you know make sure that things get the progress that they need? So the observation and the key takeaway here was that volunteers had excellent work ethic. They were very responsible and very collaborative. And in my experience, I found that there were a lot of different things that needed to be done. And I was just asking myself, is this something that I can do? Or, or can I learn to do this thing? And is there somebody there that might be able to teach me? So I started picking up small things. And this follows the apprenticeship pattern called sweep the floor. The problem in sweep the floor is if you are unsure of your place on the team and the team is also unsure of you, um, you might want to contribute and earn the team's trust but you don't know what to do. Where do I start? So the solution there is to volunteer for simple and unglamorous but necessary tasks. And for me, that was writing down notes and trans transcribing the meeting minutes. These are direct quotes, by the way, from the book whenever I talk about the apprenticeship patterns. The next constraint that we encountered was that because this is a volunteer effort, some volunteers come and go. So... A challenge here is how do we make sure we retain the context and the consistent progress that we're building up to and make sure that we're aligned in directions, right? So the observation was that during the earlier stages of our um, project, March 14, March 15, we regularly had evening meetings, daily evening meetings um, with Winston and the rest of the team who was giving directions about the different organizations and people that he's able to coordinate with. And that helped us clarify the scope and the direction and the strategy that we want to pursue for the projects. And this is the place where I actually swept the floor. I transcribed the minutes, right? In later stages, um, instead of writing things during the minutes, what happened was people subdivided and got into their own smaller groups and they focused on their own execution pods. You know, they focused on, okay, I'm going to do the registration part. I'm going to do the inspector app. And people, key people like project managers, product owners, worked as the bridges between those pods and made sure everybody was aligned. So the apprenticeship pattern that I want to share with you here is called read constantly. So the problem here, there seems to be an endless stream of deeper and more fundamental concepts that elude you, right? So things are getting more complex. Things are... Um, flying above your head. So the solution here is to focus your thirst for learning on consuming as much of the written word as possible. These are direct quotes from the book. So in my experience, um, what helped us overcome these challenges was we wrote a lot and we read a lot. By writing, we were able to make sure that anybody who wanted to catch up and get on the same page as us has those uh, readings to go through. And that enabled us to work well, even if volunteers come and go. The next constraint that we encountered is that we all come from different languages and different tech stacks. Some people worked with Angular, React, Vue. So, uh, Flutter was uh, quite new at the time. Uh, people were working with JavaScript, TypeScript, and Java. So it begs the question, like, how do we actually choose what technologies we're going to use for the project? Um, this was like March 14, March 15. I think we spent maybe like um, possibly like an evening just thinking about, okay, how do we decide with this? Um, eventually, uh, what we observed in what happened was that people uh, decided that taking action was more important than being indecisive about um, these executionary or tactical concerns. What was prioritized was the alignment on the direction and the strategy, meaning what do we want to accomplish and how do we want to strategize to achieve that. But when it comes to tactics and execution, people are free to go about whatever their preferences were. Um, this is also uh, uh, immensely helped by really great contributions of uh, the software architects on the team, enabling us to have our own kinds of you know, efforts, but still be able to effectively integrate with the different systems. So the apprenticeship pattern that I want to share here is called kindred spirits. In kindred spirits, the problem is defined to be 
um, organizational cultures that encourage software craftsmanship are rare. So you find you might find yourself stranded without a mentor, and the environment might not feel as conducive for you or your aspirations. So the solution here is to keep your momentum going, especially in the absence of a full-time mentor, you need to be in frequent contact with people who are walking a similar road. Therefore, you should seek out people like yourself who are also looking to excel. So that generally covers like all of the patterns that I wanted to share with you. It's an excellent book. I highly recommend you check it out. So I'm going to talk a little bit now about the cloud technologies and the uh, security things that we encountered. So a big contributor that enabled all of these systems to be built was the partnership with Microsoft Azure, providing us with infrastructure and architectural support, architectural design support. So we worked with Azure, we used their CI-CD pipelines. At that time, 2020, that was when I got introduced to concepts like blue-green deployments. Very fascinating um, concepts that, you know, from a, from a mid-level, senior-level kind of engineer, like those were things that I still didn't, wasn't familiar at, with at the time. Uh, we also used GitHub to uh, keep all of our source codes. And we used the cloud technology called uh, Keycloak, which uh, is an open source project for identity and access management. We also used uh, Sekuna, which is um, community-powered um, vulnerability testing. So at 2020, I was in the process of training myself as a full-stack software engineer. And so intellectual property and licensing were topics that flew over my head. It is important to define the terms of use of the software and things like liabilities. And DevCon, in collaboration with PJS Law, managed this side of the open source projects, which provided safeties that I did not know I needed as a contributor. The big takeaway here is that working with other people enables you to do more. So it is fantastic that you guys attend workshops held by organizations like Microsoft and DevCon. So keep it up and meet more people and organizations that support your causes. So here are pictures of uh, the people that we worked with, our military personnel, our government workers. Um, we have a video here donating the different phones that we're going to be using for the inspector app. Um, and our delivery personnel who need to go in and out of the country. So we donated the software to DICT and then we donated the mobile phones to DOST. By November 2020, RapidPass released over half a million QR passes, donated almost a thousand scanner phones, trained hundreds of personnel, and supported the security and safety of our frontliners. Overall, DCTX produced four different pandemic response projects that helped over 4.9 million Filipinos, and the biggest impact by reach was achieved by Relief Agad reaching 10 million beneficiaries. That impact would not have been possible without the help of Microsoft and Microsoft Azure team, so a big, big thank you. You guys enabled us geeks to have the opportunity to make a difference and support our frontliners when they needed it the most. It was an honor to be a part of it and personally one of the most exciting and fantastic demonstrations of nation building between the private and public sector and, of course, our concerned citizens. I would also like to thank DevCon Philippines, its leadership and members who've become some of my great friends along the way for this exciting journey. DevCon is not only in Metro Manila, it is actively developing its own chapters in the different parts of the country. And in DevCon, I was given the opportunity to do great work to meet fantastic Filipino tech talent, to learn from and be blown away by female leaders and be in the presence of generous mentors, educators, and leaders in the space. So please check out which chapter is nearest to you and if you're interested to build your own chapter in your province, please reach out to us on the website. Thank you for listening to our story and how we quickly organized DCTX as a community of experts building pandemic response technologies. These were how many we were during March 15, 2021, almost 400 people. And these are some of the insights that our volunteers shared. So again, thank you. Um, thank you for listening to this talk.